Hello guys, so it's Kaylee here with Embrace the Adventure. Welcome to another episode of Travel and Crime. In this series, I cover a true crime case that happened where we are RVing at the time. Since we're a family of nomads, there's never ever a shortage of cases to cover. We're everywhere all the time. But this has to be one of the top cases I've ever looked at, not just covered on this series, but ever gotten to research. Um, for some reason, it had a pull on me. I was really just into it, and I think you all will be too. So today's case takes place in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is honestly so picturesque. Anywhere you look, it could be on a postcard. It's beautiful, and, and due to that, and just the relaxing nature of St. Petersburg, the white sandy beaches, the plenty of things to do, wonderful shops, um, as well as great nursing home facilities and care centers for the elderly, keep that in mind, it draws a lot of people post-retirement. So after people retire, it's one of the top places that the elderly will go to enjoy the rest of their lives and just relax and live in paradise. So again, because of that heavy elderly population, St. Petersburg is known to have a lot of elderly type care, nursing home facilities, that type of thing. So keep that in mind. Let's start off this case with Bobby Sue Dudley. She is going to be quite the character. So just, <sighs> oh, Bobby. So Bobby Sue Dudley, she grew up in Woodlawn, Illinois. That was a very tiny community. She had seven siblings and a lot of health issues, a lot of illnesses in her family. She had lost a sibling due to health related issues. Um, there were just a lot of very severe health issues that ran in her family. So ultimately, um, as she graduated high school, she knew right away she wanted to go into nursing. And a lot of people do believe that that was kind of pushed forward by her constantly growing up in that type of environment where her family just needed so much care. So that was kind of the obvious choice for her career-wise. Well, Bobby ultimately, you know, went into nursing. So. She was a nurse in Illinois. So by the time she's in her 30s, she had met a man. They got married and all was well. However, when they wanted to start a family, they soon realized that, that Bobby Sue Dudley could not carry children of her own. However, they adopted a son and all was well. That was until their son had to go to the hospital for a drug overdose at a very, very young age. I'm talking toddler, small child age. Red flag, red flag, right? So this drug overdose, was linked back to Bobby Sue Dudley. She had overdosed her son on a certain medication in order to make him sick to have him have to seek out care at the hospital. Now we all know if you keep up with true crime, you've heard of the Dee Dee Blanchard case, which is probably the most famous for Munchausen by proxy syndrome. That is where you kind of force an illness or force a, an illness falsehood on someone near and dear to you or someone else in general. So in this case, Bobby Sue Dudley was making her own child sick um, to make him get care for something that he did not actually have. So that is such a sick way to um, live in this world. I don't understand it. It's, it. It is interesting at the same time though. I do think that cases involving Munchausen by proxy are very interesting because they just, I can't wrap my mind around it. It's just, it's very odd to me. I could never ever hurt somebody I love. And that just kind of shows you guys how really sick they are and really just distorted their thinking is. So again, she had drug overdosed her own son. So he would have to seek care medically for attention and her marriage fell apart, of course. So after this is linked back to her, her husband leaves her good and ultimately gains custody of their son. So, you know, in Illinois, Bobby Sue Dudley's life is falling apart, her personal life, now her career, because she's gotten several marks at work now for trying to seek attention or using treatments in excess. So overdosing her patients or giving them an excess amount of certain medications. So ultimately her license in Illinois gets suspended. Okay. So Bobby Sue Dudley is freaking out. It's like, okay, my marriage is gone. I don't have my son anymore. Um, my career is falling apart. So she picks up everything and moves to St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, so this is where the story really starts getting wild. So the director of nurses at the New Horizon Nursing Home in St. Petersburg, Florida sits across from Bobby Sue Dudley for an interview. Because remember, she's a nurse. She's a registered nurse from Illinois. And this was in 1984, okay? So the internet wasn't exactly what it used to be. You couldn't really research as heavily as you can. And 
that was kind of how things worked, right? So in 1984, she's sitting down for an interview to be a nurse at the New Horizon nursing home in St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, so sitting across from Bobby Sue Dudley, the director of nurses had said she had a childlike quality. She didn't seem quite as mature as the other nurses. But, you know, when she called and checked all of her references, everything checked out. When she called to verify her license, everything checked out. And there was nothing that said her license was suspended for harm to patients or anything that put up a red alarm or anything. It just said that she was in good standing. So the director of nurses at the New Horizon nursing home had no reason to think otherwise. So she hired Bobby Sue Dudley. This would be the biggest mistake that had ever taken place at this nursing home. Now let's talk about New Horizon. So New Horizon was more of the ma and pop type nursing home in St. Petersburg. It wasn't your huge type nursing home. It was more intimate. It had about 50 beds, which made it that much more appealing. It made people who trusted their relatives and their care feel even safer knowing that they would be only one of about 50 residents. So that care would be that much closer and more intimate and their relatives would have that much of a better experience. So she's working there and things start to get weird really fast. Okay, so we're gonna jump back a little bit. Let's talk about Stella. So in 1984, Miss Stella was almost 85 years old. And at this point she had lost her husband not too long ago. And her family, as well as her doctor had decided that, you know, since she started walking less and almost getting um, like a failure to thrive type situation. You know, she'd lost the love of her life. She's um, elderly. She's kind of alone in her house. Her family decided it would be best for Miss Stella to go to the New Horizon nursing home because they had heard wonderful things, had an excellent reputation, more of an intimate care setting. And, you know, they entrusted Stella to go there and, you know, felt really good about it. You know, what could go wrong? Stella had been at New Horizon Nursing Home for roughly three months and Cecilia, who is Stella's granddaughter, received a call from her father, which was Stella's son, on Cecilia's birthday. So her granddaughter gets a call and um, hears that Stella's in a coma. So imagine the surprise, you know, Stella didn't go into this nursing home because she had a really horrific health condition or she was near death or something was really wrong with her. She just went because she kind of had you know, that failure to thrive situation. She wasn't taking care of herself anymore because she just, she was kind of lost. She didn't know what to do. It's a very common situation for people to be in when they lose a spouse, you know, or go through something like that and get older and they feel alone. So that was the reason she was in there. Nothing else, nothing that would cause her to go into this coma. So her family is stunned. And then not too long after that, they get a call that Stella had died. Now imagine this, you had entrusted your grandmother or mother, depending on whose perspective we're looking at this from. Um, Cecilia had lost her grandmother and Cecilia's dad had lost his mother. And the guilt just crippled them. You know, they had decided along with their doctor to put Stella in New Horizon um, for, you know, they based that on the excellent reputation and she's dead. How did this happen? She was only there for three months. She was fine when she went in there. How did this just happen? And the thing about nursing home deaths, unless there's a factor of suspicion, there's not usually an autopsy done. Nursing home deaths are usually just ruled as natural causing because it happened in a nursing home. So as long as a physician signs off on that death certificate, um, they're not usually investigated any further. So Stella's death just kind of went on and the family was left with more questions and then answers. And one thing I do need to note is Cecilia, who is Stella's granddaughter, she went to the funeral home, you know, a couple days later after Stella's death, when the funeral was taking place. And she recalls looking into the casket and thinking, that does not look like my grandmother. And, you know, her dad reassured her, you know, people look different when they pass away. You know, he's trying to explain this to her and just kept saying, no, her face looks flat and her, her throat is swollen. So there's something really wrong here and nobody paid much attention to it. Mm. But that stuck with Cecilia, that really stuck with her because she just knew in her gut that something was off here, but she didn't know quite what. Remember, Bobby Sue Dudley is working here, you know, at the same time that Stella had passed away, okay? But in a span of 13 days, 12 residents die. And during those 13 days, during a 24 hour period, five of those deaths occurred. So the main director of nurses at New Horizon freaks out. 
you know, this is a place with only 50 beds, 50 residents at most. And they've had 12 deaths in 13 days. And a cluster of five of those deaths happen in 24 hours. So she freaks out and she calls in every everybody from corporate to the the dietitian side of the facility to um, other companies to come in and just test all of the environmental factors. Is this coming from the air? Is this a, coming from our food? Is this is this something airborne? So they're thinking this is an infectious disease. There is something really off here causing this many people to die in such a short, short period of time. It's just, what is happening here? So, you know, during all of this, it was just, everybody's questioning themselves. All the nurses are thinking, you know, did I miss something with that patient yesterday? Did I miss something? Did I did I not catch something that caused her to die? I mean, everybody's second guessing themselves and questioning their work and questioning their ability to do their job. And you have the dietitians cross-checking charts with nurses, and then you have corporate and people coming in from all different sectors of this place to cross-check notes and nothing's coming together. Nothing's making sense, not yet. A couple nights later, the director of nursing was just kind of walking through the facility kind of she was going into a room to check on a patient just kind of making her rounds and doing her due diligence when she hears what sounded like a glass door opening in the room across the hall which isn't normal because this is a nursing home and this nursing home along with many others they have locks on the um, doors and windows to keep residents in and safe and they have alarm systems you know they're locked down so why is she hearing a sliding door open? That doesn't make any sense. So she drops everything, runs across the room, and she sees the night nurse holding her stomach, pushed against the wall and crying loudly. So, you know, the director of nursing is freaking out. Oh my gosh, you know, somebody just broke in and stabbed our nurse. What is happening? She looks over and she sees a butcher knife on the floor. And the nurse that was stabbed was Bobby Sue Dudley. And she was the night nurse supervisor for a lot of nights at New Horizon. And when she says, you know, what happened? Oh my gosh, what happened? She said somebody, she thinks it was a man, opened up that sliding glass door. And when she, the assailant freaked out and stabbed Bobby, the nurse, and ran away. The director of nursing immediately calls an ambulance, calls the police, and, and reports this break-in and attempted robbery, you know, freaking out, saying one of my nurses is stabbed. Somebody tried to break into New Horizon, this nursing home facility. And right away, the detectives come in. You know, they're sweeping the scene. They're checking it out. Um, Bobby Sue Dudley is rushed off to the hospital and stabilized and the detective finds out right away pretty much that he couldn't interview her because she was kind of, um, she was being cared for, so she couldn't be interviewed at the time. But the detectives start kind of looking around the scene and he says right away, the main detective, he says, you know, this isn't right. No, this, this isn't right. Because you wanna hear the number one thing that they notice, okay? So remember, Bobby Sue Dudley was stabbed by the assailant. It was a butcher knife. So, I mean, it was a long knife, okay? It only went in about a half inch to an inch. So you're telling me if you're breaking in to facility and you're surprised by the night nurse, you're only gonna go boop. No, no. If you're surprised and you don't wanna get caught, you're either going to stab multiple times or you're gonna do it one good old time and it's gonna be potentially fatal, at least life-threatening. You're not just gonna boop, put about an inch. You're not gonna do that. So he, you know, right away, the detective, the main detective says, mm -mm, this isn't right. So then they get all the notes together and they're going through this case and they're trying to find this link. What is causing these deaths? Because ultimately that stabbing and attempted burglary is what got the police's attention. You know, when they're in there investigating that um, break in, they get word of all of these mysterious deaths the 12 deaths in 13 days. So the detective calls the local medical examiner and says, hey, in a facility with 50 beds roughly, is it normal for 12 people to die in 13 days? And the medical examiner says, we need to have a talk. The detective is over, you know, talking with the medical examiner and trying to figure out what the hell is happening here. Meanwhile, the director of nursing as well as everyone else is crossing out, okay, it's not the food. It's not anything airborne it's not this it's not that and they're looking at the notes and they find a common denominator they find that the same night nurse the supervisor 
was there for every one of those 12 deaths. And that was Bobby Sue Dudley, the same nurse who had supposedly been stabbed in that attempted robbery a couple nights back. So now it's red flag city. Things are not adding up. And the police go and they try and interview Bobby Sue Dudley because, you know, by now she's out of the hospital. And as soon as they sit her down and start questioning her, it's, oh, man, I have a headache. I feel sick. I can't really, I can't do this. And of course, since there was no smoking gun yet, they had to terminate the interview. They had to let her go. So, you know, now it's like, okay, we kind of, we've got an idea of what may have happened here, but we can't prove it. So then... You know, they're still going through and they, they know that these deaths are suspicious, but what caused them? You know, what, what could have ultimately caused this to happen? And there was one resident um, outside of the 12 who had passed and she ultimately just had gotten really sick, okay? And Anna was her name and she was in the care of Bobby Sue Dudley, of course. Sorry, my kids are like cracking up at Booba down there such a weird show but they love it so there was a resident named anna and she had gotten extremely sick during the period that all these deaths were happening but anna was um noticed by another nurse and the nurse had said you know hey she's not doing well she was doing really well yesterday something's off here and the director of nursing had noted that what bobby sue dudley ended up saying was very bizarre and definitely a red flag so anna you know is an elderly patient at new horizon and she had gone from being completely healthy to all of a sudden ba being barely able to breathe and they call in they meaning the director of nursing and the other nurse who found her this way called in an ambulance to you know take anna to the hospital to see what in the hell happened because she was healthy and what is going on in this place right and Bobby Sue Dudley was in the room and she was so pissed at the time that they had called an ambulance for her. And she was saying, she's a DNR for God's sake. Why are they, why are they calling an ambulance for her? And the director of nursing and some of the other nurses took note of that and just said, you know, that's weird. You know, we're thinking like, why do they care that she's not passing away at New Horizon? And all of this is starting to come together. It's starting to make sense, right? So Anna gets rushed to the hospital. She ends up recovering, thank God, but they found an ungodly amount of insulin in her system. Okay, and this is when things are coming together. Click, 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 right? Things are coming together. We've got red flags. The police are zoning in. They're zoning in on Bobby Sue Dudley. They know that she's doing something. And now they know that Anna, who was under her care, has an ungodly amount of insulin in her system. She's not a diabetic. And Bobby Sue Dudley was the supervising nurse during all these deaths, and she was the only one who had a key to the cabinet that had insulin. Okay, things are not going well. They're not looking well for Bobby. But no, they're not. She's guilty. She is, and I know it at this point, and so do the police. But how do we prove it? Where's the smoking gun? So since insulin is a reoccurring chemical produced in the human body already, you can't test for it in an autopsy. But, here's the but, insulin is the only medication in the world that has zinc as a stabilizer. So you can't test for insulin in an autopsy, but you can test for zinc. Out of the 12 deaths that happened in the 13 days, if you take out the cremations, there were nine bodies that had to be exhumed. So just imagine this too as the families, you know, you've lost a relative suddenly, suspiciously, weirdly, and now, you know, you've gone through the funeral in the morning and now their bodies are being exhumed because something suspicious could be happening. I mean, these families just had to be losing their minds as well as all the staff and the director of nursing, the detectives, everybody just has to be losing it. I just, I can't even imagine. So all these bodies are exhumed and ultimately four of them are ruled very weird. Two were ruled homicide um, injection of an unknown substance and two were ruled homicide by suffocation because the bone here, I believe it's the hyoid bone, it was broken in both of those people. So that means that they were suffocated. So now we've got homicides. We have absolutely, this did happen. But the bad thing was um, once those bodies are exhumed and they sent the injection sites um, to be analyzed for zinc, um, a couple had really high levels of zinc and a couple had barely any. So it's like, okay, we definitively say, you know, this is it. Even though they knew in their heads, like, okay, this has to happen. This is it, right? 
there's no way to do it. And still, you know, so they exhume these bodies, they know this, but how do we prove this in a court of law kind of thing? So they're kind of back to square one. And now it's been six months of investigating this and tirelessly searching for connective factors and just trying to figure it the hell out. And the more they've dug into Bobby Sue Dudley's past, they're seeing that not only did she overdose her son, so that's Munchausen by proxy because she did it to someone else, but she has Munchausen syndrome in the sense that she had caused herself harm several times for attention in the hospital. She had, you know, taken too much of something or faked an illness or the typical Munchausen things that you see people do. You know, she's not only doing this to other people, aka her son, she was doing it to herself and now she's killing nursing home patients. Like this woman, she she's not stopping for anything. She she just doesn't care. So the police bring her back in, and this is why. Remember when she supposedly got stabbed, okay, an inch, and they never found us, okay, that whole thing that she staged. Um, she had filed with Workman's Comp to get ultimately $25,000. Not only that, but a man had reached out to her during all this media attention of all this craziness happening, and they had gotten married. So now it's Bobby Sue Terrell, she has a different last name, she may get 25 grand. She's a flight risk, right? So the police are like, hell no, we can't do this. We know it's our, our person. We just, we've got to get a smoking gun here. We have got to get something, you know, that definitively says she did it. So they call her back in for another interview, sit her down. They're not getting anywhere because people like her can manipulate and manipulate turn it around and make themselves look like the victim. The police never got anywhere, but since she was a flight risk, they decided that was enough to get a search warrant. And this is where Bobby Sue Dudley, now Bobby Sue Terrell, would crumble. So they removed over 400 pieces of evidence from Bobby's home and the absolute nail in the board was a journal found under her mattress. Bobby had written down these um, victim's names notes about it, about the crime. It was kind of a tell-all, almost a trophy of what she'd done so she could go back and relive it, you know, so sick. But that's what did it. And so ultimately, Bobby Sue Terrell, used to be Bobby Sue Dudley, was sentenced to 65 years. And she ultimately died in prison, thank the Lord. So yeah, you guys, that case was so sick, but I ultimately, you know, I think it's nice that justice was at least served. It's better than a cold case, right? When you just don't have that bow at the end to just tie up the loose ends and, you know, the bad guy gets punished, even though it doesn't bring the victims back. It doesn't bring much more peace to the families. Um, it's still, it feels better to know that the perpetrator kind of at least served some time, you know, and in this case, she died in prison exactly where she should have. And, um, you know, New Horizon was much better off without her. So this case was crazy. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I I got into this one big time and I wanted to recommend as well, and this isn't sponsored or anything, but the Oxygen app is where I find most of these cases. They're super informative. Um, so I like watching the true crime there. This, this case in particular is under the license to kill section, which I, I really enjoyed it. I've watched like nine of them so far. Only have the app for a day. Again, not sponsored, but I love the true crime on there. The story format's pretty interesting. So yeah, comment down below, you guys. Let me know what you think about this case. And we will be in different areas in Florida for a little bit. So comment down any cases that you'd like for me to cover in this area. So give this video a like, maybe share it with a friend, and I will catch you guys in the next one.